One early morning, Gordon awoke with a start. He felt strange, but could not explain why. His driver, who had come to clean him before work began, reassured him. It's the ditch water, he said to Gordon. It can get into mechanical workings and make you feel sick. Gordon was satisfied with that explanation, but what was odd was that he couldn't remember falling into the ditch, even though it had recently happened. The memory was fuzzy at best. I'm just exhausted from pulling the express so well, he chuckled to himself, and fell back into an uneasy sleep. He dreamt of vague images, those of a mine and of darkness below. In these images, he felt apart from himself, as if viewing the events from above. He couldn't see anything clearly, but he felt strongly that these memories didn't belong to him. Later that morning, Gordon sleepily brought his train to the junction. Thomas, who looked equally tired, greeted him with a smile. Long night? Thomas asked. Yes, I had some very strange dreams, Gordon replied. Me too. It was like we were back in the mine again. But when I awoke, I couldn't actually remember being there at all. Gordon's eyes widened. I had the same dreams. Come to think of it, I couldn't remember falling into the ditch, much less rescuing you from the mine. What does it mean? Thomas asked. I don't know. We only just came back. I remember bringing you to the yard just before the Queen came to the island. I remember that too. But why can't we remember actually being at the mine? The two engines decided to find out for themselves. That night, the two of them popped up the line which led from the big station. They rounded the bend that led to the mines, but were met with cautionary signs for tread. Danger! Collapsed mine ahead. We'll have to investigate from here, said their crews. They walked past the signs and towards the collapsed mine shafts. They came back a short while later. What are you doing back so soon? Thomas asked. Nothing to see. Let's head back. Thomas and Gordon didn't believe them. You didn't even take a light with you. How could you have seen anything? Their crews insisted, but Thomas resisted. He sped through the cautionary signs and stopped at the edge of a large, gaping pit. When he looked down inside, he shrieked. G-G-G-G-Gordon? In the pit were two mangled engines. One looked exactly like Gordon, and the other like Thomas. Who, who are these engines? Gordon asked. A terrible fiend began stewing deep in his boiler. I can explain, said a familiar voice. The fat controller stood next to his car, a light in his hand. I had hoped this day would never come, but alas, here we are. These were you, he continued solemnly. What do you mean, were? asked Thomas, distress in his voice. When you fell into the mine, Thomas, you didn't just fall. The mine collapsed beneath you, swallowing you whole. We tried bringing Gordon, our strongest engine, to lift you out with a pulley system, but we misjudged how hollow the shaft was below, and he too fell into the Grolem chasm beneath the ground. But how can we be here if we're down there? Gordon asked. It is a gruesome tale, said the fat controller. We had a major scandal due to our lack of judgment, and to save face, we saved your faces. There was a talented engineer from crew who moved your identities into new shelves. The entrance you see below, your formal cells, were prototypes. Thomas and Gordon didn't know what to say. In their confusion, they began to cry. That doesn't change who you are now, the Fat Controller said. You're still two of my most useful engines. We gave you another chance. And avoided a scandal. We understand, Thomas said in a derisive tone. Soon after, the two engines slunk home, buffer to buffer. Everything felt familiar and foreign at the same time. 
they didn't feel whole anymore, knowing that a part of them was rotting away in the bowels of the mind. They only hope that one day, many years from now, these memories will become fuzzy too.